Okay, so welcome everybody. This is, uh, needless to say, a pretty special event. We've got Tom Sosnoff here with us uh, from Tasty Trade and Tasty Works. Super excited to have you on with us. Um, I, I, I just wonder if this is how, you know, journalists feel when they're sitting in front of Tom Cruise or something, you know, like it. <laughs> starstruck, starstruck. Uh, but this is great. Super, super happy to have you on with us today. No, I'm excited to be here. So yeah, looking forward to it. What we can do, um, I will give you the time. I want to give you as, as much time as you need. Um, and I won't say too much. I'm here to do anything I can and need to, but uh, just really happy to have you on with us. We've got some people from all around the world. Um, uh, lots of lots of U.S. folks, but we definitely always have some Australians and some uh, Europeans in here. So it'll be a nice, uh, a nice intro for all those guys. Cool. But uh, very happy to have you with us. Okay, let me just make sure. I know we were having a little Zoom issue. Let me make sure that you are able to share your screen and do all of that stuff. And I think you should be just fine. Um, let me find you real quick on our sprawling list here that seems to be growing by the minute. Um, okay, here we go. I see. Uh, um, all right, so here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, Guys, because we're having a little Zoom uh, situation, uh, those that will be uh, uh, doing any co-hosting, I see Scott in here with us, Scott Sheridan, welcome, very happy to have you. Uh, anybody else, uh, you can unmute yourself. Those participants that are just watching and listening, uh, just make sure you keep your, your microphones muted uh, so we don't have any background uh, noise issues or anything like that. Um, okay, so Tom, you are welcome to... Um, Share, there we go. Uh, share your screen anytime you like. Everything should be working um, there. Uh, this is all being recorded. Super, super happy to be part of this webinar. So just take it away. Beautiful. Okay, well, the reason, so so just give me a little background, Jared, just for one second. Just tell me, um, uh, you know, kind of just give me a little bit of a, the demographic of who we're talking to. And just remember everybody, that um, uh, I'm just checking my screen. So Scott Sheridan, who's the CEO of Tasty Works, and uh, Ryan Grace are both on the chat. So if you have any questions, um, uh, th those guys can answer anything. They're 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 well versed in every aspect of our business. Of course, um, Scott runs it, so um, uh, nothing's off limits. Fire any questions you have at them. Any questions at all on strategy? Any questions on accounts? Any questions on on Tasty and uh, they can basically answer everything instantaneously for you. So it's really nice. Then we don't have to look at the chats, Jared and myself, we can just, you know, carry on a nice little talk and hopefully it'll be really beneficial to everybody. Um, but J Jared, my question to you to start off is, um, cause I think this is the first time that I've done something with you guys. And so just give me a little background as to like, who am I talking to just so I know kind of the, what most people are, are trading. So that's a really good question. Um, I would say that a, a good chunk of the group in here today um, is, you know, I would say medium to decently experienced on, you know, uh, stock and options. Um, you know, I, I talk and make a lot of videos and teach a lot about strategies, you know, credit spreads and, and um, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, so, so many people in here will be fairly well versed on that. Um, I have a pretty sprawling database and I do have quite a few people that um, have kind of been moving over into the option space, a lot of uh, uh, futures traders, a lot of currency traders. So, so you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a split group. I think any, any kind of intro to options, uh, you know, on the platform and so on will be interesting. But a lot of people in here do have a, a decent amount of option trading experience. Beautiful. Okay, so welcome everybody, and um, I'm excited to be here today. It's, it's what I love to do is a um, little bit of a crazy day today, and then afterwards, you know, have some more fun just talking about markets and things like that. So, um, my name is Tom Sosnoff, and um, I am the the founder and uh, co CEO of of this company, Tasty Trade, and which owns Tasty Works. And it's kind of a it's an ecosystem of about seven, six or seven different companies that we own. And primarily 
um, we are the world's largest digital financial network. And then we are also one of the largest online brokerage firms in America, like in the top five or six. So um, we specialize in everything. And I should give you a little bit of background on this. Um, so Scott and I, Scott's on the chat today. Um, if you're not familiar with us, um, Scott and I built a platform. We, we were floor traders on the floor of the SIBO. We left the SIBO in about 2000, 1999, 2000. We built a platform called Thinkorswim. That was our first venture into the online trading business. Um, Thinkorswim was a very popular platform. It was bought by TD Ameritrade. It was recently bought by Schwab, which is now their primary platform. So Thinkorswim has kind of like been an industry kind of innovator. And, um, and we built that for 10 years and it was, it was a fun project. We were a public company, we were bought out. So we moved on and then we built Tasty. And we originally started as a network um, and it's a little bit different than a traditional financial network. Tasty Trade is a network built around quantitative, probabilistic, and strategic content. So we basically built a goodwill model about providing a crazy amount of research. We're a think tank just to talk about trading in with a numbers game. We're all about math. Um, this is not about technical analysis. This is not about fundamental analysis. This is not about cyclical analysis. This is not about anything traditional as you've ever seen before in a network. We are 100% um, no guests, no news, and really just a, a, a math, essentially a research-based math network. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what we do. And so everything becomes statistical, quantitative, probabilistic, and, um, um, and we, tie it, we try to tie everything together math-wise. Well, in the process of building up Tasty, we decided that at some point we, we wanted to build another brokerage firm because we wanted to monetize our model and not have to rely on different brokerage firms where we didn't control the technology. We wanted technology that talked and that, that acted like, that, 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 that could participate with our content. That's the easiest way to say it. And we also wanted to build a brokerage firm where the fee structure made what we promote, what we kind of preach, made it feasible, made it sensible, made it applicable, made it practical. And hence, Tastyworks was born. So. Um, Tasty is a, the whole ecosystem is really interesting. We have a magazine, we have another brokerage firm called Doe. We have, um, uh, we own part of a crypto settlement company. Um, we have lots of different projects. We have a project going on in Canada. We have a, we have a brokerage firm in Australia and, um, and we build all this. So we control kind of this crazy flow of content pricing and technology. Our real specialty is building technology. We believe that this Tasty Works platform in front of you today is the premier trading platform in the world right now. Um, what I mean by that is this is a platform that is um, that is the only one that is pure high frequency. So where you've heard about HFT, where you've heard about HFT technology, and you've heard about things um, generally like that with high frequency market making, high frequency trading, the Tasty Works platform has. HFT middleware, which means it's really fast. That's the easiest way to say it. It's just fast. And because of the speed, we're able to do something that, that's really the goal. Scott and I had this objective from day one. We believe that to be a really good broker, you need to have one, one goal. You need to facilitate opportunity. So what we do on Tasty is we facilitate let me change this screen here. We facilitate opportunity. And that's what I'm gonna take you through today. A little bit of a walk through the facilitation of opportunity. So we support stocks, which by the way are free. You need to trade on here. Stocks, stock options, um, futures, futures options, and crypto. We're the only platform that supports all of the above. So there is not, in, in America right now, there's obviously a lot of big online brokers. There's Fidelity, there's TD, there's Schwab, there's E-Trade, there's Interactive Brokers, um, there's Robinhood. Um, those are just to name a few. None of them support all the products I just mentioned, except for Tastyworks. None of them support crypto, futures, futures options, and listed equity options, and uh, obviously stocks. 
we're the only platform. So Jared, that's one of the first things when you come to Tasty is as a facilitator of opportunity, we don't restrict you on what product. We don't care what you want to trade. If it's if it's listed in the US, we'll, we will offer it. That's one thing. The other thing we don't restrict you on is, is strategy. So like Jared, if you're teaching, I don't care what the strategy is, but if you're if you're helping people to learn how to trade different products and different strategies, we don't care what strategy you use on what product. And we don't even care what kind of account it is. So whether it's a IRA account, you can do anything you want. Whether it's a individual margin account, anything you want. Portfolio margin account, anything you want. So we're the only broker in America that supports all products, all strategies, all regardless of account type. That's a huge edge because you don't realize how simple that makes things. You make one deposit, we do everything on the back end. So you just trade from one simple interface and that's what I'm gonna show you today. And trade anything you want from a simple interface. And Jared, I should ask you this, how much time do we have? Uh, we have absolutely as much time as you need. Oh, that's even more beautiful. Um, <laughs> take, take, well, take it away. What, what, one thing just to say really quick is, is you're mentioning all the features of, of Tastyworks. Uh, you know, I've been pretty religious about Tastyworks for the last little while. And I just thought, yeah, I mean, just brokers just offer all this stuff. And I just really like Tastyworks platform. And then as I go to, you know, I, I have to have some other broker accounts for some other things I'm doing. And I start to notice the massive amounts of restrictions. And I thought, I don't know how these guys can offer everything they can, but the platform has been awesome. It's been just a great experience so far. Thank you. Well, it's Tasty is, is lightning fast. It's very stable. Like today, I don't know if you know this, but Coinbase was down. Now Coinbase only offers digital assets and um, you know they were down today. So we don't have any of the problems that most brokerage firms have, which is slowness, which is downtime, things like that. I mean, of course we could, but we've been very stable. Our technology is new, it's fast, it's pure Java, it's pure HFT, and it's also super simple. What you're looking at in front of you right now is the entire Tastyworks platform. We kept everything to three columns, a left-hand gutter, which is a watch list, a center column with everything built into it, and a right-hand gutter with lots of different things, like a simple chart, like a video stream up here, your positions, your um, all your activity from the day, no matter what you want to see, it's all built into a single look. Now, before you think, oh my God, maybe they don't have everything I need in here, it's actually packed. <laughs> um, we build... Um, we build, one of the things we've done really well for 20 years is build all the game-changing technology in this space, in the retail space. So we're pretty clear of the concept on kind of what we wanted to build and how we want it to look. What we wanted to do with Tasty was build a platform that is super simple, not bloated, but has everything that you could possibly want at your fingertips. You know, right, let's go, like, ready to go. Like, for example, I'm going to show you because the markets are actually open right now from 3.30 to 4 o'clock central time. We can trade a bunch of different products. So I'm going to show you how simple it is trading on the platform and things like that. And we'll use some futures. We'll use some futures options. We'll use some stock. Stock options are closed right now, but then we'll also trade some digital assets and things like that. So we'll have some fun in the next, um, you know, in the next few minutes. We'll probably go till around, let's say, 4 o'clock. So let's say SPY, we'll start with spiders. And the SPY, you know, obviously was kind of all over the place today, but only closed down a dollar. Um, but one of the things that we do different at Tasty is the first thing we show you is IV rank, which, measure, which measures implied volatility against itself over the last 52 weeks. So you can put some kind of a, I don't know, you can, you can, you can put some context around implied volatility. The next thing we do is um, right on the trade page, we show you the number of days to expiration. We also show you over here the implied volatility, and then we, we show you expected move. So for example, if I wanted to look at, let's just say June options, there's 30 days to go. The implied volatility is 22.5 and the expected move till June expiration is $16.55 based on a couple of the at the money strikes. Now, if you wanted to put a position on, this is where the platform gets, this is where the design of the platform and we're really big into aesthetics gets pretty cool. So let's say, you're just, you're a little bit bullish. So you want to go out and sell an out of the money put. So I'm going to stock close today, just over, um, just under 411. This line shows you where it closed. Let's just say I go down to the 
406 puts just for the hell of it and click on the bid. So that would be obviously a bullish position. I'd be selling puts that are, you know, almost $5 out of the money and then pops down to the bottom of the page here. You don't have to go anywhere else. You can see your Greeks. So this trade has a 65% probability of profit. This is the amount of, well, let me change the quantity to one to make it simple. It has a 65% probability of profit. It picks up $721 in extrinsic premium. It has an 80% P50, which is the probability of making 50% of this number or $3.60. It has the Delta, which is the theoretical stock equivalent of 41 shares of SPY. And it shows you over here, you know, max profit, max loss, which obviously is infinite. So that's a little bit not really fair. And then it shows you the buying power reduction to make this trade. All of this on the line here, including the order entry bar. Now, so you're like, okay, well, this is kind of cool, but maybe I don't want to put up, you know, all the money it takes to sell this particular option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy the 403 puts. And now I have a put spread. Now notice, I don't have to type in anything different. I don't have to change anything. So now I just sold, I have potentially, I'm selling a put spread for 86 cents. And okay, you're like, okay, it's a $3 wide put spread, 86 cents. Not too bad, almost one third the width of the strikes. Probability of success, 56%, probability of making 50% or 43 cents, 77, 77%. And you're like, okay, but I'd like to get a little more premium because this is only four deltas and I'd like a little more stock. So I'm gonna raise these puts by just dragging that to the 408 strike. Now I'm collecting $1.51. I have seven and a half shares of stock, 54% um, probability of profit and a 78% chance of making 50% of max profit. And the amount of money I have to put up is the difference between 403 and 408, which is $5 minus the $1.50 that I collect here. So the difference between those two is 350 bucks. But maybe I wanna put up less than that. So I just drag this up and now I'm back to a $3 wide spread collecting just under a dollar. I'm just showing the flexibility of the platform. And if I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna sell the naked option, I just delete that side. So there's no typing and you can move these strikes anywhere you want and you can change the quantity to whatever you want. But here's where it gets really cool. So let's say, you know what, I'm short this, this $7 put, but I'm gonna sell a $3 call against it. So I'm gonna go out and sell a $3 call against a $7 put. Now you're like, that's a strangle, but it's a little bit of a skewed strangle. So it's still delta long, but it's a skewed strangle, 50% probability of profit, 74% P50, and it's a normal strangle. But now you know what, instead of a normal strangle, I'm just gonna change the strikes for a second. Instead of a normal strangle, I'm gonna sell a put and I'm gonna sell a call spread. So I'm gonna sell a naked put and an out of the money call spread. That's a Jade Lizard. Notice how I didn't type in anything different. I've just clicked on it. I just clicked on a bid or clicked on an offer. So this is an out of the money call spread with a short put. And now I say, you know, I don't want the Jade Lizard. I want to make an iron condor. I'll just buy this. Now I have a $2 wide iron condor. And again, I'm just messing around with the platform to figure out, hey, this is what I, and it's the beauty of this platform. Now I can make the put side $3 wide and the call side $2 wide. I can make the put contracts two and my call contracts one. So I can sell more puts than calls. I can keep it an equidistant iron condor. Okay. I can make the call side wider make it a little more bearish, all the above by just dragging the strikes. You don't have to do anything. The platform is indifferent, which is the coolest thing. It doesn't care what you do. We are, it's agnostic to strategy. Now, if you're like, that's kind of cool, but I'd love, love to see what this looks like in a visual. So you go to the curve mode and there's a visual inside of a distribution curve. This is not an analysis page. We have that as well. So we have a really complex analysis page. This is just a pure visual of, um, of the two different spreads inside of a distribution curve where it's green, you make money and where it's red, you lose money. You're like, wow, this is a little tight. So you know what? I'm going to widen this out a little bit. I'm going to widen this out a little bit by just dragging the strikes a little bit. Now I have a slightly wider iron condor and you can see, make money where it's green, you lose money where it's red. There's obviously red over here. This is the distribution curve, you know, inside of the expected move 70% of the time, pretty damn slick. But I take it back over here, back to the table mode. And because I really want you to be able to see this. I move these a little too far away. Let me move these a little closer so you can see it on one page without having to scroll. But 
Um, now let me move these in a little bit just so you can fit it all on one page. Normally you wouldn't do this, but just so you guys can see it. So it looks like it's on, you know, a single page and I'll flatten this, I'll widen these strikes out a little bit, widen these strikes out, take you back to the curve mode for a second, just so you can see kind of how, how visual we've made the platform because certain people are very visual and other people, they like it in the pure math mode, which is totally cool. The market, your watch list over here, your visuals here, your small chart up here, your positions for this particular underlying right here, all of the trades that you made today, if you wanna see them in here, or if you wanna see trades just made in the SPY today, right here, pretty cool. Now, the neat thing about the platform, in addition to this, is I'm gonna go back to the table mode for a second. Let's just say, okay, that's cool, but you know what, instead of just SPYs, I just wanna see, I'm gonna to go to Facebook, for example. So I click on Facebook, now, what happens here is Facebook pops up in the middle, Facebook chart pops over here, Facebook positions pop in here, Facebook um, activity, which I didn't have any in this account today, pops in over here. The look and feel is exactly the same, and it's just a different underline. But you say, you know what, that's cool, but instead of Facebook, I want to check out the micro e-minis. So I'm going to click on the micro e-minis. The options pop in the middle, same look and feel. The, um, the underlying's on the top, the mini charts over here, positions over here, and any anything we traded today in the micros over here, which was nothing. Um, but if I wanted to, like right now, the market's open and uh, the micros are, you can see they're, they're still down 16. I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna click on the bid. Okay, that's how fast the platform is. Here's the fill. You saw a little message pop up here, but if I click on the bid, and it pops in minus one. And this is live, by the way. We don't have paper trading, so this is all real. And if I just double click on that, take a fill, there's the two lot I just sold, two one lots. Here's the two fills over here. And if I wanted to cover this position, just to show you, I just right click, close position, and just double click on that. Done, filled. So I can trade stocks and options and futures and futures options, all from this simple interface. Like if I go back to SPY for a second, SPY, and only because the market is closed right now. So what's open is after hours. So if I wanted to trade, for example, 100 shares of SPY after hours, I just go to extended hours, click on this, and there's, oh, oh I missed the market, they moved. <laughs> Hold on, I'll replace this, uh, 48 cents. So I'm filled. And then if I turned around and said, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm gonna sell this out because that was not something I wanna take home tonight. So I just take, um, in this case, I only did a hundred shares, so I'll change that. And extended hours. And the reason I'm doing this live is because I want you to see that um, when we, I want you to see because it's easy to say you do stuff, but it's a lot more interesting when you see somebody actually do it. You see how fast it is. You see how easy it is to follow your positions here. You see how easy it is to follow your whatever whatever your overall stock position would be right in here. I don't have any in the SPY right now. Um, it's easy just to see kind of everything you're doing. But this platform has a lot more. It has a watch list built into it right here. It has Tasty Trade, the network. If we wanted to watch the whole network, it's right here. Oh... Zoom killed me. Um, hold on one second. Jared, sorry about that. Zoom just doesn't let you watch something when you're in the middle of it. So hold on. Oh, gotcha. No, no problem. No problem. I forgot it. Zoom doesn't like it when you go to, um, when you show a web stream inside of Zoom. Okay, no worries. Is, is it, is it uh, anything I need to do on this end? Is it letting you show your screen again? Nothing you need to do. It'll, it should come back up in a second. Yes. Okay, there it is. So nothing you need to do at all. Okay, perfect. Um, so I will skip that showing you that how that works. Um, we have two charting packages built in here. This is kind of uh, classic charts with, with tons of different um, indicators. And then we also have tasty charts which is a brand new charting platform that we're building. Um, we also have in here um, a follow page 
which allows you, for example, if you wanna see everything I did today, you can just click on Tom and there's every trade I made today. And there's so, about a hundred, hundred of them. Um, it's, it's not showing your screen right now. We see you just not oh. your screen. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. How's that? Uh, bingo. Perfect. There we go. I'll take you back to this. I'm sorry about that, everybody. Um, so a couple things. So we have a follow page on here. So if you want to see every trade I made today, you just click on this little follow icon and every single trade that I made today, which is about a hundred trades, they all pop up on the platform. Um, the main takeaway from the from the from the just the start of this discussion is just to show you that from a single interface, you can trade any strategy in any product in any account type. We don't have those crazy rules where, like, if you only have a certain amount of money, you can only trade a certain thing. You know, we try to be very open to everybody. You want to do something? Go ahead. It's we want to be the facilitator of opportunity, and so that's how we treat that's how we treat the entire platform. But what we also have on the platform that's super cool is the ability to see things in the curve mode, in the table mode, but we also have an active trader mode. We also have a grid mode, which allows you to trade from, um, which allows you to trade from charts if you want to. Like in other words, I only have it set up here for one, but you can trade from you know, um, two or three charts if you want to, that's a grid mode. And then we also have a pairs mode, which allows you to trade multiple underlyings um, together. Like this case, you can trade two different futures or two different stocks or really whatever you wanna trade. And you can see a little chart of it and you can expand the chart if you want to and you can route things as a simultaneous order. And that's a slick little interface. And then we also have a crypto interface. And again, we are the only, um, well, I. I shouldn't say we're the only online broker that offers because Robinhood does offer crypto, um, but they don't offer futures. They don't offer like it, we offer not just only crypto, but if you wanted to trade, for example, the micro Bitcoin product from the CME, you can trade it right here. And if you wanted to trade it against crypto, we have 13 different coins. Um, so today, for example, um, I traded Ethereum, Bitcoin, and I traded Polkadot. I'll show you. So these are three of the underlyings I traded. Now, this is how simple this is. Let's say I want to go out right now and buy um, $500 worth of Bitcoin. You just change your price, you change your quantity to 500 and just hit review and send the same as any other interface. And there, I just bought $500 worth of, of Bitcoin. If I wanted to go out and buy $500 worth of Ethereum, and these were all over the place today, I just bought $500 worth of Ethereum. And if I wanted to jump down here to, um, to Polkadot and buy, I'll buy $300 of polka dot. And these go 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What we also have that's kind of, that's really cool that nobody else has is we allow you to trade physical gold on this platform via secure token. So if I click in PAX gold, this is physical gold. It's a little different than gold futures. So if I wanted to buy, let's just say in PAX gold, I wanted to say, you know what? I just want to buy a hundred dollars worth of physical gold filled. So those are all real trades. And again, we're the only platform that offers that selection. And here's the other neat thing. We have a $10 cap. So the commissions on crypto are 1% up to $10. So you can trade, um, you can trade as little as a dollar and you can trade as big as one full coin, which would be, you know, today they were down a lot, but let's say $40,000 is one coin. Well, at Coinbase or Robinhood, they would charge you four hundred dollars, one percent, to charge to to buy a full coin of Bitcoin. We charge ten dollars. We cap everything at ten dollars. All option trades ten dollars. All um, crypto ten dollars. You never pay more. So, the neat thing here is we're up to one fortieth or one fiftieth the price of of Coinbase or Robinhood, but we offer actually just as much functionality and the simplicity of being able to trade it all in line with everything else you do. Like, so for example, if I went over here for a second and I wanted to trade this, which is the micro 
Bitcoin future of it's the equivalent of $5,000 worth. And I'm going to lower it. This is the offering price. I'm going to lower my bid to put it in below the market a few ticks above where it's currently trading. And that's my bid working oh, filled. There you go. See, so I just bought a micro Bitcoin. So I just bought the future. So I bought $1,000 or $500 trading the cash market and five $4,000 trading the futures market and no other platform. I mean, Robinhood does not let you do that. Coinbase does not let you do that. Only Tasty. And that's really cool. We don't limit you. And if you're trading all these products and you're, you know, you're on, you know, and, and Jared's going over lots of different things with you and talking about kind of really, you know, why limit yourself to one market? It's like walking in a casino and they're telling you you can't play blackjack or you can't play craps or you can't use the slots. It makes no sense. So we've always been this way. It's, it's every marketplace is available to, um, to every user. So for example, let's say you wanted to trade Cisco because they had earnings this afternoon. So the only reason I bring up Cisco because I don't really ever trade Cisco and I didn't trade it for earnings today. But let's say after market, you want to trade Cisco. You can trade it right now, not the options, but just the underlying stock. Here's the neat thing about Cisco. The expected move today was, um, was, was actually a little bit lower right on the close, about $2.50. The actual move is about $3.25. And that's the reason I didn't play Cisco was just because the 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 actual moves are usually a little outside of the expected move. Cisco is one of the only the few stocks that happens to, but you know we support customers that want to trade all different types of earnings trades. Let's say you wanted to play Cisco for an earnings an earnings trade this afternoon, and let's say you wanted to play you know an an out of the money strangle stock closed at forty two expected move was two and a half dollars. So you went up to trade the 40, 54 and a half calls. You went down to trade the 50 puts. Um, you would have collected, you know, around, let's say 80 cents. That would have been pretty close to a 50, 50 shot. And the stock, um, you know, at 49, you'd be a small loser with one day to go. I'm just pointing out very classic, you know, earnings trades and kind of showing you that the software, you know, like there's no other platform today where you could have traded um, a Bitcoin future with Bitcoin cash and then any earnings play and then any underlying stock or future. I mean, there's just, there's just no other platform that does that. So it's pretty cool in that, in that regard. Um, Jared, is there any um, specific areas you want me to touch on that, you know, like of, of different products? I think that's, uh, I, I think you've covered some pretty, pretty awesome stuff. Um, that's really cool. That's, that's super great. Uh, well, one thing I would be curious about is, um, you know, platform related, but, but I mean, what is a, a real go-to kind of favorite option strategy of yours? Well, I'm, I probably about 60% of my trades now I like to be diversified. So I like, I, I believe in strategic diversification, but I would say 50 to 60% of my trades are short strangles. So I'm a strangle seller, not, not, I'm not a premium buyer. So my, my go-to strategy is high implied volatility, sell out of the money premium, keep your size small, adjust aggressively. And in the process, I like to maintain a little bit of short Delta, which keeps me um, I think it keeps me a little more, um, it keeps me, the short Delta protects me against the velocity of a downside move. And the short premium is my preferred way to trade because I, I like to force the market to beat me rather than me try to beat the market. Sure, sure. That's, that's awesome. Uh, one of the things I talk to, to all these guys about uh, pretty regularly is uh, we do a lot of short strangles, um, especially when we own the stock. You know, it's kind of just a cost sure. basis reducing uh, uh, type strategy. Do you do that much or are you mostly just kind of naked? naked? Short I, I do it when I think the markets are oversold. So I will do it. Um, I will do it in certain underlyings. Like I did a little today. And like if I think a stock like today, I looked at Mara today, I looked at Riot stocks that have really been beaten up badly with this down move in digital assets. And I looked at some covered. We call that a covered strangle. And I looked at some covered strangles in there. It's like, it's a, the long stock short call is a bullish position and you add a short put to it, that's also a bullish position. So it's a little bit of like a double bullish position. On the trading floor, we used to kind of call it the stupid, 
but we do it on in an oversold condition because it's a double long. That's the only reason we called it that. But okay. I like it if you think that if the implied volatility is high and the stock, you think it's on its butt. Sure. Awesome. That's great. What What, what is... Um... And I know at, at Tasty, you guys are, are pretty big into selling premium and, and, yeah. and I definitely do, you know, the majority of that. What is your, your go-to strategy when you feel like, um, I mean, you just said if, if you feel like something's a little bit oversold, you'll do uh, uh, like a covered short strangle. Uh, what's another, I mean, do you buy call options much or, or what, what's your other kind of take at, at an oversold stock that you think is bullish? Um, I'll sell puts. So if I, I, like today, I thought Intel was a little oversold, so I sold some puts. Um, I will I will sell, I don't sell a lot of naked calls, only naked calls, like I'll sell naked calls and puts, but I don't really sell a lot of naked calls, um, but I will sell naked puts. So um, if I think a stock is pretty much, is pretty beaten up or something, I will consider a naked put. I, I I trade a naked put more often than I trade covered calls just because it's more capital efficient. Sure, sure. So if you're yeah. looking at a stock, just like in, as an example, if you're looking at a stock like Cisco, just here as a, as a crazy example, like if you sell a naked put, you're only putting up about, you know, between 16 and 18% of the strike price. That's the amount of capital. So if it's a $50 stock like Cisco, you know, you're only putting up about eight or $900 to sell, to sell a naked put. If you buy the stock and sell a call, you have to put up 50, a little under 50%. Um, so you're basically putting up 2,500. So it's just, it's a significant difference in the amount of capital required. You know, it's 2,500, which you're borrowing 2,500 then too. So you're leveraging 2,500 and you're putting up 2,500. So the full capital requirement is 5,000. And if you're selling the put, it's only 800. So if you're leveraged, it's one third. And if you're not leveraged, you know, it's, it's basically one sixth. Gotcha. I'm sorry, that's, six times, I'm sorry, six times, six times difference. Yeah. Good, good. That's great. So, so you would say, um, so any, any other, I mean, like given some real extreme types of market conditions, um, you know, obviously right now we have, you know, half of the stock market feels a little bit like it's going to fall off a cliff and the other half kind of looks like it's got some great things in store for it. Um, what are, what are some kind of extreme strategies you'll use, uh, in, in some of these conditions? So, you know, it's interesting cause that's, that's a fair question. So what I try to do, and I think this is important for everybody is, is I try to focus on having a portfolio that, um, I don't mind having some direction, but if I am going to play something directional, I usually use something static. So what I mean by that is I look at the world of finance in two ways. The way number one is, hey, make the stock beat me and I'm going to be short some premium. Way number two is if I feel really strongly that I want to take a directional shot, I will use a static underlying. So I'll use the future, I'll use the stock itself, or I'll use some kind of an option strategy, which is not designed to take advantage of premium decay. Um, and so most of my positions are designed to take advantage of premium decay, but occasionally, you know, like right now, you know, I'm short some futures, you know, right now I'm long some Bitcoin. So occasionally we'll do things to take advantage of that. Cool. That's, that's great. That's great. Um, I think, uh, I, you know, I think one thing people are always interested in, uh, any, any favorite, uh, any favorite trades, any favorite stocks, any favorite, uh, areas right now? Well, I definitely think that, you know, unfortunately, there's not one of my favorite areas would be in the digital asset space. But unfortunately, right now, there's not a lot of really good stocks to trade. There's only there's only three. In my opinion, there's only three tradable stocks in the crypto space. There's Riot, there's Mara and there's um, Coinbase, which are the three stocks I think that are, you know, they're, they're all in play, but they're Coinbase is not a great trading vehicle. Mar and Riot are pretty easy to trade because they're only 23 and you know $25 stocks. So, so those would be two. That's one space. Um, I think there are some some interesting, you know, different different kind of interesting groups. I mean, there's been a there's been a pretty decent sell-off. I mean, in the Nasdaq is down to you know 13,200, down from 14, just over 14,000. 
So you've had a nice little, you know, 5%, 6% sell off in the NASDAQ from its highs. So there are some NASDAQ stocks that have gotten cheap. I'm not buying them yet, but like I nibbled a little bit in Amazon today with some short put spreads. I was a, I, I didn't buy any Apple today, but I looked at it. I got a little tiny bit long Tesla at one point today, just trading it from, you know, a little bit of the long side because it was beaten up pretty good and the NASDAQ didn't look that weak to me today. Um, so, so we nibbled on Tesla, we nibbled on Amazon from the long side. There are a few tech stocks, I think, that have really had the crap beaten out of them. So they look, you know, from a trading side, they look okay to me. Um, we got a little bit long Intel this morning. Some of the semiconductor stocks have been blown up over the last, you know, couple of weeks. We've been very aggressive trading earnings this cycle. And earnings stocks with high IV rank, we've been trading a lot of those. Um, I'm a little bearish on precious metals here. I'm a little bearish on oil stocks. I don't really like any of the commodities at this point. I think they're all expensive. So we're a little short gold, we're a little short um, uh, crude oil and, and some of the stocks that make up those, those, those groups. That's great, that's excellent. And, and I know, you know, a lot of people here would be pretty interested. I mean, what, what are like one or two key points that, uh, that kind of get you interested in a stock? I mean, are you uh, heavy on just implied volatility? I mean, how, how do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm super heavy on implied volatility and I'm super interested sometimes in price extreme. So the nature of my game is to be, is to be look for opportunities to sell premium. So the implied volatility rank, and it, which is measures implied volatility, is my primary because I believe that you know 70% of the time volatility will contract. And then I will play, I'm I'm not not direct, I am not somebody that likes to trade non-directional. So I do trade a little bit of directional with my, you know, with my short premium. So I am a person that's very opinionated. So I'm a contrarian and I will look at price and try to fade big moves in one direction or another. I don't do it because I think I'm going to be right. I actually know I'm not. I, I do it because I, I'm pretty consistent with respect to how I trade. So I'm right as about as much as I'm wrong, and it forces me to put positions on. So what it does is it takes the fear of decision making away from me, if that makes any sense. Yeah, which, which which is great. I mean, I think uh, I think a lot of us get a little bit of trigger uh, shyness from time to time, especially especially if you spend one second watching any amount of financial news out there. Then then it's just uh, it's just craziness. So yeah, that's awesome. I, I I love that idea of strategies, and and we do a lot of that here, and I definitely do a lot of that of of just saying put me in a situation where the the stock goes up, the stock goes down. I'm going to be fine on my option position. So. I like to be, the thing I love about options, this kept me in this business for, you know, almost 40 years is you can be right and you can lose money or you can be wrong and you can make money. <laughs> and the strategic part of the option world is the most exciting part. You know, with most other, with most other financial investments, um, they're very, what we call, they're very static. They're black and white in nature. So if you buy a future, it has to go up. If you buy a stock, it has to go up. If you sell a future, it has to go down. If you sell a stock, it has to go down. If you buy Bitcoin, it has to go higher. If you buy Ethereum, it has to go higher. I mean, there's not, it's, it's very black and white. It's not that interesting to me. It's, it's not strategic. But if I'm trading Cisco and I want to sell an out of the money put, you know, I know automatically if I, if the, here, if the stock's trading, at, we're close today, 52 and a half, and I sell the 50 put, I know based on, and, and by the way, this is already, you know, I can't use this because it's already picking up the, the, the move after the close. Let me do something different. I'll go to Riot for a second. So this stock's basically the same price as it closed. So if I go to June options, just as an example, and the stock closed at $24, and I go down just to, just to show you the 20 puts and I sell the 20 puts. I know based on this Delta of 26 that I have a 75% chance of making money. That's strategic. I understand I have unlimited risk, but I have a 75% chance of making money. I like to be able to define my strategy by, by kind of, you know, playing around with the risk, with the probability of profit relative to the risk that I'm taking. And I like things like that. I'll take 184% volatility to generate all this premium with a 75% probability of profit and a break even, which is 
250 minus $20, because that's the premium you're collecting, which takes you down to about 17 and a half, which means I'm going to have about, an, in the neighborhood, a realistic 82% chance of making at least one penny. I like that. Yeah, that 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 is that is really good. Um, so I, I want to be respectful of your time, and I really appreciate it. Final question here: um, I, I find myself uh, doing a lot of uh, you know naked puts, for example. We'll we'll, we'll sell naked puts uh, quite often, or you know maybe a credit spread, uh, a bullish put spread uh, on a stock that I'm happy to own anyway. And so I I just say to myself, well, obviously if it expires, uh, if the option expires worthless, I'll make some premium. Uh, if I get assigned some shares of stock, am I okay getting assigned at this price? And then we start the whole strategy of covered calls or short strangles or whatever, and kind of work a position that way. And, and that has uh, equated in some pretty stellar just wins time and time again. And I usually kind of tend to lean on those stocks that I'm happy to own. I mean, any thoughts about that? Or, or are you less interested in, in uh, owning stocks and kind of staying with options a bit more? I'm less interested in owning stocks. I, I, I obviously, I understand that that methodology, that philosophy. I personally um, think it's a bull market phenomenon. And, you know, for the last 12 years, that approach has paid off. I think that you have to you have to realize that you you could have riot was trading for 50, 60, 70 dollars for a long time. If you had sold a put at the 60 strike when riot was trading at 70, you could say to yourself, hey, you know what? I'm collecting five dollars, this but I'll be happy to buy riot at 55. Well, now it's trading at 24. So you're not that happy to buy it at 55. You know, like you have to realize that there there are in a in a perfect world with positive drift. That approach is okay most of the time, but we, I have seen markets where, you know, like if it, I'm okay with that approach, but at some point, if you're taking, if you're taking delivery of that stock, you've got to be willing to blow out some options against it on the call side, just to, just to reduce your, you know, to reduce your basis and improve your probability of success. So if you want to sell a put, take delivery of the stock, that's fine. But as soon as you take delivery, sell an out of the money call against it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'm and remember, it requires it requires no additional capital. So the thing that people mess up with is they think I don't want to sell that call because I don't want to limit my upside and I don't want to put up the extra money. But it doesn't require any extra money. Right. Yeah. Because you're yep. already long the stock. There's no more risk. Yep. That's great. That's that's awesome. That's really excellent, Tom. Uh, we are incredibly appreciative. Uh, anything else you want to you want to share? Like I said, I don't want to keep you forever. I know you guys have got just uh, uh, quite a few things going on. I, I, I was chatting with uh, Brittany a, a bit, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago in scheduling this webinar, and, and I, she said, you know, who would you like to be here? And I said, well, Tom, of course, but anybody. She said, Tom can do it. And I thought, really? So <laughs> I yeah, understand she's, you guys. She's are so trying to kill me. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> No, no, no. I actually love doing, I love talking to groups that we haven't, like we haven't spoken with you before. And I think it's really important. And we have a philosophy where nothing's off limits and we'll talk to everybody. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not, a, it's not for me. It's not a pick and choose, you know, everybody's our customer and, and um, we want to have really good relationships with, you know, with, with people like you that, that um, we consider you, you know, a strong marketing partner, and you know, we consider you, you know, an, an advocate for the firm, a spokesperson, and so you know, we want to do everything we can to support you, to support your clients, um, whatever you know. If you guys wanted a certain piece of technology that we could build, we'd build it. If you want us to do another webinar, if you wanted some other talent that we have on the network to talk to your group, you know, listen, I'm, we're happy to do it. It's. We're, we're unlike any other brokerage firm. It's what we do all the time. Every day this week, we have webinars it's with, with different groups. It's something we, we love to do, man. What else are you going to do? This is, this, is, this is what we do. <laughs> well, that, that, that's really awesome. Uh, uh, it has been, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure, and I definitely appreciate it. And I'm thankful for everyone to showed up. And uh, this is really cool stuff. We, uh, um, there, there were many, many things on the platform that I wasn't aware of. I mean, I feel pretty um, well-versed in it, and, and you showed a lot of really cool things there. That uh, There's one real- thing I didn't show, which people would really, I think, I'm, I'm going to spend, if you don't mind, one more second, Jared. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we have a feature on here that is unique to Tasty. And it's it's something that no other platform in the world has. And especially if you make lots of trades, like Jared, you just said, so you sell a put, right? And 
and then you get put the stock. Stock goes down, you get put the stock, right? Yep. And then and then later on you sell a call against it. Now you have a covered call on, right? And and you you're like, hold it, where did I sell that put at? Where did I buy that stock at? Right? You know, you can't, it's hard to track everything. Well, we have a feature on this platform called chains. It's right here. And whatever position you have on, like, like I'm looking at Riot right now. If I click on chains, it's gonna pull up every Riot position I have on from when I initiated the position to what's open today. So what's cool is like, let me, let me take you back to this for one second. Let me just go to overview because so you can see this. So in Riot, I have a really small position on. I'm long 1500 shares of stock and I'm short a 20 lot of the 24 calls. This is exactly what you were talking about. This is like, it's like a covered call, but I'm just short an extra couple of calls, but it's Delta neutral, right? Mm -hmm. I have, I put this on in like three different stages. I have no idea where I did it. I literally have no idea. So if I click on chains right here, I can see where I put this trade on and all these different positions. And I can see, you know what? Here's where I initiated, here's where I initiated the position. Here's all the different roles I did. Here's, we're actually up $495 on the total position from when I opened it. And, and it's still open, but it shows every trade connected to every trade that you put on and the system does it for you automatically. We've been, it took us over two years to build this. And it's the only, only um, feature like this in the, whole, in the whole world that allows you to track every option trade you made attached to the underlying and each trade is segregated. So you can, you can follow every different trade that you make and it automatically tags all the different trades, all the different roles, all the different adjustments, all the different forward roles you do, everything you do, it tags everything for you. Uh, that, that right there is such a useful tool because uh, especially with, with the kind of strategy that I, that I use, uh, I really need to kind of track that break even price or that overall profit and loss of, you know, maybe a series of 10, 10 trades. Right. And this, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a, you guys, it, it's almost like you guys made this so that people could use it easily. You know, <laughs> yeah, look, look, this is, this is just this riot trade, but this one riot trade, one, two, three, four, five. So it has five different adjustments and I could never follow that. I mean, I just, I would have forgot where I did it. It's all here. Sure. Yeah. No, that's, that, that, that's so great. I, I, uh, I really love those features because I actually have another, you know, there, there's another brokerage that I have to use for one of the other things that I do. And I have to go into this crazy account history and I have to export stuff. And then I have to send it into another program that'll even all the numbers out for me. It's insane. It's, it's insane. It's like, I know. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's terrible. And so, we yeah, I, I, it all for you with one click, you don't have to do a damn thing. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really good. That's really good. We, we love the platform in here. Uh, there's, you know, I, I know we do have a couple of thinkorswim users. And so that's, that's some of your guys's heritage, but I'm always pushing uh, uh, people sure. into tasty works because there's just, just no toss, reason to use anybody else. Toss, toss is a great platform. I mean, it was my lifeblood for 10 years of my life. All I did was live and breathe that platform. But um, when we built Tasty, we built something even better. So um, that's all. I mean, listen, it's great. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for, thank you everybody for listening and thanks for participating. Hopefully you asked a lot of questions to Scott and Chris and uh, Jared, thanks for your time and, and uh, for, you know, for entertaining me and for asking great questions and happy to come on anytime you want. Just you give us a holler. Really appreciate it. Definitely a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody. Take care. See you guys.